Well hey guys, you join me back on with the Triumph Spitfire project and I've got a new set of drilled and grooved discs to fit to the car and also a set of green stuff EBC brake pads so hopefully this should improve my braking performances. So anyway, let's get them fitted to the car. So Spitfire front brake pads are pretty easy to remove. We've just got these two little pins here we need to just get rid of. And then the securing pins for the pads, those can then be removed. And then the brake pads themselves can just be eased out of the caliper. There's one and the other one just there. And as you can see, my pads, they are still quite good, but I do want to just upgrade them because this car was a bit of a barn find and I don't know the history of the brakes. And I always think you're putting your life in your hands with the brakes, so it's best off having a nice new set in the car. So I've got this brake caliper wind tool, which we just put in place there, and that will wind back the pistons there nicely and evenly they're really handy to get hold of these tools I just see the pistons are wound back nice and evenly each side and then the next step because I'm replacing the discs will be to undo the two mounting bolts for the caliper either side so there's one there and two there and if we just get on it with a ratchet, hopefully it'll all just come apart. And we can put the caliper to one side. So there's one there. And just support the caliper, because we don't want to put any unnecessary strain on the brake hose. So if we just put the caliper up there on the top wishbone, it's out of the way, and there'll be no unnecessary strain on that brake hose. And then we can bring the wheel hub back to the centre there. Then the next step will be getting this hub off. And just before I do that, I just want to check the wheel bearing for any wear, and that seems to be okay. Then we can remove this dust cover and that's just a hammer and chisel job. I'm not too worried about damaging the dust cover as I've got another one anyway to replace it. So, how that comes. There we go. And that just there reveals the hub nut. Now I've got a bit of cardboard on the floor for all the wheel bearing parts to go on to because we don't want any grit getting inside the wheel bearings. So if we just take the split pin out there Pull it. Help towards us. And then the hub nut can then just be undone. Put our thumb over the end there because what's going to happen if we don't 
the outer bearings just going to fall off and fall on the floor. So as we just pull the whole hub towards us, we're keeping everything together there as we pull it towards us. And then we want to just turn it upside down. And we've got the inner bearing there and we just put that on the bit of cardboard out of the way of dirt and grime. And then we'll take this onto the bench and replace the brake disc. Okay, if we put the hub in the vise here, and I'm actually putting the wheel nuts against the jaws of the vise, and then just gently doing it up, not tight at all, so it's just to stop the actual hub moving as I'm undoing the four securing bolts for the brake disc. And these bolts here aren't actually done up massively tight, so it should be okay, and it shouldn't damage anything as we undo them. They're actually 34 pounds feet. So, if we get rid of these, four bolts and they've got spring washers underneath to secure them in place so that's one And that will prove to be a little bit tighter, but four. And then hopefully, yep, yeah, I'm quite lucky. Sometimes you have to give them a little bit of a tap underneath to remove them because rust and corrosion can get between the disc and the hub. So that's the disc off. Then the new disc, we just put it down there for now. And we're going to clean up the front surface here with a bit of brake cleaner. We're just getting rid of any of the old grease that they put on these discs from new. It's really important to do this because you don't want any grease on, on your brake pads when you first go to brake. So just clean those up nicely and then flip it over the right way around and put it where it needs to go there and then same again bit of brake cleaner all around the areas where the brake pads are going to go and then we can put the securing bolts back in place Bring them down with the ratchet. One. Two. It's always a good idea to, when you do tighten up bolts like this, just do them diagonally opposite and then go around the clock. And that just makes sure that they're put down nice and evenly. And then lastly, I've already got my torque wrench set up to 34 pounds feet. So I'll just torque these up to the correct torque. One. Two, three, 
four, and then just check them. One, two, three, four, and then we can put it back on the car. Right then, the mucky bit, reassembling the hub. So, firstly, just a little bit of engine oil around the felt seal on the inner bearing race. That just helps this seal settle in. And then we can put that in place. And then the inner bearing race, with a little bit of grease, we just want to repack the bearing. So just putting our hand in a little cup position like this. Try and get the grease in between the rollers as I turn it. And that way it just packs it out nicely. And then we can put that in place there. And I'm just going to clean my hands off because grease is quite sticky and horrible. Yeah. Just rub it round there. And then the washer, which can only go one way because it's got a flat side on it, flat key down there. And then the securing nut, the little castle nut can go in place. I'll just clean my hands off again, because like I said, grease it just gets everywhere. I said this is the mucky part of the job. And just do that up. So that's, this isn't done up tight at all. There is a Pacific setting for this. However, I've always found with these, if you just do them up, you see hand tight there, it's not done up, not wrenched it really tight, it's just, just nipped, just, just lightest nip. And then undo one flat of the nut there. And that, nine times out of 10, is about right for that bearing. And like I said, it is just literally just nipped up like that. Just nipped it to squish the grease out of the bearing and then undone one flat of the bolt. So one flat there. And then that's usually about right. Let's just test it. Going around like that seems to be about right. Let's Seems to be about right there. And then a new split pin in place. And just peel that back. And just clip off the other end. just tuck that down the other side of the nut. That's nice and tidy and it ain't going nowhere. Now because I've got the new little dust cover there and like my friend David Russell Wilkes, please do check out his channel on MGBs. I like to be really careful on putting these in place. I don't like to damage them. Oh, this one doesn't seem to be going in place too well. Just a little bit of time. There we are. Home there should be all fine. And then we can move back on to refitting the caliper. Okay, so the brake caliper can now go in place. And just put bolts one in at the top. Just loosely fit, so we get the, the one in at the bottom, 
try and get it around the back of the back plate. Of course, this is always going to be the fiddly bit, the back plate. As you just get those bolts in place. And then just tighten those up. And just torque them down to 65 pounds feet. Check them. One, two, and then we can get the new brake pads in place. Now, EBC brake pads come with this anti squeal backing. It's like a sticky back sort of thing that you cut to shape and you just stick to the back of the pad. So, I've already done that. So, all I've now got to do is just put a little bit of copper slip on the top and bottom of the brake pads and put them in place. There's one there. And the other one, just there, and then the little pins can just go in place and across there, and then they're just secured in place by a little R clip there for the bottom one. And the same again on the top one, a little uh, clip in place. So now we'll just pump the brake pedal and then we'll do the other side.
So there we are. That's the new brake pads and discs fitted to the Trans Spitfire project. And just a word of warning out there to anybody looking at doing this job, do make sure you pump that brake pedal after finishing the job. You want to make sure that brake pedal goes nice and hard because the last thing you want to do is go down the road and you're trying to pump the brake pedal and you end up into the car in front of you. You don't want that. Just make sure you pump that pedal. Secondly, if you are up right in the disc, do check them because sometimes you get them that they're actually sided and they are on this car, as you can see in the video, they're slightly different pattern each side, so it's always worth checking. And lastly, you know, when you're taking the car out on the road, give it about 100 miles or so of gentle braking. Just let those pads bed themselves in nicely to the disc before you do any hard, aggressive braking. Anyway guys, I hope this video has been useful to you guys out there or anybody looking at changing the brake pads and discs on a Triumph Spitfire. But as always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.